today we are going to be talking about time blocking or time boxing, depending on who you are listening to and how they say it, and batching your days. So this is an example of my work calendar. Obviously, it's not my actual calendar at work because, you know, the whole world doesn't need to see that. Um, so I recreated something that is very similar to what I use at work. So just a couple of call outs. Um, the very top, so ideally when you're thinking about um, blocking your days, the concept behind that is focusing your days on specific projects or tasks or um, areas of focus. So for me on Mondays, those are my strategy and vision days. Tuesdays are um, when I focus on one-on-ones and critical meetings. And Wednesdays are my internal customers focus. So I actually choose to work in a separate building on uh, Wednesdays, both my executives and I actually um, work in another building together for the purpose of connecting with our internal customers that we don't um, get to see every day. Thursdays, I actually run um, staff meetings almost all day long. I have three staff meetings. Um, I run two staff meetings for my executives and then I have my own staff meeting every week. And then Friday, I focus on my weekly wrap up. So making sure that I have accomplished all of my tasks that I have um, closed out with everyone and that there's nothing left open for me um, for the following week. I mean, obviously there always is, but as much as I can possibly close out, I do. So this is a great way that you can really focus on. And again, things will definitely come up and it's not that you have to absolutely stick to this or the whole world's gonna crumble. But it is a great visual reminder, just being able to see this every single week, right? That the, this is just a reminder that I'm being purposeful and intentional with my time and where I'm investing it. Okay, so now let's shift over to time boxing. So this is um, an overview of all of the things that I need to accomplish in one week. One thing that I highly suggest is go through your current non-negotiable calendar items and build off that. Um, as you can see here for me on my very heavy staff meeting days, I have, um, I prep for an executive staff meeting and then I have that staff meeting and then I go directly to prep for my staff meeting and then I hold my staff meeting. And then at the end of the day, I actually have time scheduled so that I finish all of my actions that are coming out of those staff meetings. So all the agenda items, um, all the follow-up, if there's anything that I need to add a task to, you know, so let's just say somebody has an action, they may not have access to our OneNote or our SharePoint, so I will send them a specific Outlook task to make sure that they understand the request and the timeline, the due, the due date, and any other pertinent information. So um, it's really important to think about what are your non-negotiable calendar items and then build out those actions that you know are absolutely going to be related to them. Um, one of the other things, if you can see here, these ones in blue, these are my executive, uh, these are for one-on-ones, but these are with the two executives that I support. So on a weekly basis, we meet for two and a half hours. So it is really focused on um, Mondays and Fridays are our strategy sessions. And then Wednesdays, we focus on very tactical stuff. So this is just a great way for me to visually plan out what's happening in my week. Now, again, because I'm supporting two executives, this will probably look different than someone else. Um, mine is obviously a little bit different, but the concept is still the same. But the one thing that I do wanna point out is if you notice, once you start doing this, you'll find that the amount of time that you think that you have is really not there. So all this available white time, um, these are my available hours to meet with people. I try to keep Mondays as a no meeting day whenever possible. And if you can see here, um, I have changed this so that it's busy all day long, but I still do my time blocking. Wednesday, we're not in the same building. And so I do leave that open, but I have changed it. So you can right click on it. and then click show as and working elsewhere, you can also go up here and do it. Um, and then Fridays, I'm happy to meet with people, but 
As you can see, Mondays and Thursdays, typically I try not to do any meetings unless they're absolutely critical. And then Tuesdays and Fridays, I really only have one, two, three, four, seven hours that I can meet with people throughout the week. So um, you won't have as much time as you think you do once you start filling it up with actual tax, tasks and projects that you're actually working on. So I hope this is helpful. I'm very excited to hear how other people use time boxing. And I'd love to hear, do you call it time boxing or time blocking?